Hello everyone, this is Marco Castanja from the Polytechnic University of Turin and today I will present the results of my research paper entitled Non-Intrusive Load Monitoring Techniques for the Disaggregation of On-Off Appliances. Let me start by giving you a definition of non-intrusive load monitoring. Non-intrusive load monitoring comprises a set of techniques for estimating the energy consumption of household appliances exclusively based on the analysis of the total load of the house. There are several motivations behind the use of NILM. The first of them is the reduction of energy consumption in households. The second one is the optimization of energy management in smart grids. And the final motivation can be the detection of anomalies in the monitored devices. One of the first questions is uh, how does NILM work? We know that, in general, NILM uses pattern recognition algorithms to find the power signatures of the devices in the total load of the house. In this example, we can see that a dishwasher, a washing machine and an iron can have very different power signatures, characterized by distinctive features that allow us to distinguish between them. In fact, we know that every appliance presents a very specific power signature that allows us to distinguish between them. In particular, researchers found that there are three main types of appliance signatures. There is a type 1, which is characterized by only two states, on and off. Then there are type 2 appliances that are also called multi-state because they present more than two states and can be modeled by finite state machines. And finally, there are type 3 appliances that are characterized by a continuous power signature and are the most difficult one to be recognized because uh, the power signal is uh, very variable. Previous works proposed several algorithms to solve the energy disaggregation task. For example, they proposed sparse coding algorithms, combinatorial optimization, graph signal processing, hidden Markov models, clustering, and deep learning techniques. All of them are based on pattern recognition algorithms, so they only work if the appliance presents a very specific power signature that allows to distinguish it from the others. But what happens if the appliance has a no specific pattern? We know that the peak power is not always a reliable feature because uh, two different appliances can present the same uh, peak power level. And we also know that the duration can change from one operation to the other. For example, the dishwasher uh, works always with the same program and uh, the duration is uh, regular between two different operations. But, uh, for example, the activation of uh, an eater can be different from one operation to the other, depending on the specific usage from the user. For this reason, we are proposing an online clustering algorithm that exploits additional features other than peak power and duration. These features can be both operational or external variables, and they are useful to recognize significant patterns in the operations of on-off appliances. I just want to give you a brief overview of our dataset. In particular, the input consists of a set of unknown operations obtained from the residual of an existing disaggregation algorithm. The monitoring period covers 11 months from 1st September 2020 to 31st July 2021 and the dataset contains a total of 53 houses. Every unknown operation is characterized by the following features, the peak power in watt, the time duration in seconds, the time of usage measured in seconds from the start of the day, the day of week, which is an integer number from 0 to 6, and the binary variable that indicates if the day is a weekday or a weekend day. The pipeline of our methodology is very simple. We just have a preprocessing step where we scale uh, all the features and then we directly apply the online clustering algorithm to the unknown operations in order to extract uh, relevant patterns. As I said, the preprocessing consists only of feature normalization. We subtract the mean from the feature and divide everything by the standard deviation. From a broad perspective, 
the online clustering algorithm is very simple and it is just an extension of a density based clustering algorithm. First of all, we check if the new point can be assigned to an existing microcluster and we do that by computing the Euclidean distance between the new point and the point belonging to a microcluster. If this first condition is not satisfied, then we can check if the new point can form a new microcluster by itself. And we do that by checking if there are enough neighbors and assigning the points around the new point. If also this second condition is not satisfied, then we can label the new point as an outlier and it will be analyzed in the next iterations. There are a few additional properties of online clustering. First of all, we can kill microclusters that remain unchanged for a certain number of iterations because we want to avoid the false positives. Second, we can kill outliers that are un unassigned for a certain number of iterations because we want to avoid the overpopulation of the clustering plan. And finally, we can also decide to merge two close microclusters to form a, a microcluster because we want to form other shapes other than globular shapes during the clustering process. The clustering algorithm runs in parallel with four different features combinations. We also call them clustering plans. We can find the two-dimensional clustering plan formed by peak power and time duration, but we can also find the three-dimensional clustering plans that are uh, formed by the combination of peak power and time duration with time of usage, day of week, and the weekend variable. To evaluate the quality of the clusters, we define the quality metric that is given by the silhouette score multiplied by the number of points in the cluster divided by 20. This is useful because we want to penalize uh, smaller clusters and favor more significant patterns. In this slide, we reported the final results for a specific cause of our dataset. For each column, we have a different features combination. In the first row, we have the evolution of the quality metric during the monitoring period, while in the second row, we have the final clusters found at the end of the monitoring period. According to these results, we only found a significant pattern in the two-dimensional clustering plan which is the cluster number one with 21 data points. And we can see that because the blue line exceeded the 0.9 threshold that we defined for our work. Here we reported the distribution of the number of clusters in the monitored houses. And we can see that we found at least one cluster in the majority of them, while only eight out of 53 houses doesn't contain a significant pattern. Here we reported the total number of clusters found for each feature combination and we can clearly see that the majority of them belong to the two-dimensional clustering plan formed by the time duration and the peak power while the three-dimensional clustering plans account for only a minor part of the total number of clusters. We also analyzed our methodology in terms of convergence time we counted the number of operations until uh, a significant pattern uh, is found. We can see that we need uh, at least uh, 45 uh, operations in the two-dimensional clustering plan and uh, a median number of 27 in the three-dimensional clustering plans. We also analyzed the convergence time in terms of number of days. In the two-dimensional clustering plan, we need uh, a median number of 90 days before a significant pattern is found, while in the three-dimensional clustering plans we need a median number of 60 days before a significant pattern is found. In conclusion, we can say that the proposed methodology improved the average accuracy of the existing name algorithm by 7%, passing from 80 to 87% of the total load in the monitored houses. In addition, operational features like peak power and time duration remain the most significant variables for the appliance detection, accounting for 85% of the total number of clusters found. Finally, we can say that the median convergence time stays between 2 to 3 months, which is a reasonable monitoring period for a real-world application of our methodology. 
Here you can find the full list of references from the original conference paper. In this slide you can find some information about me and my previous academic career. There is also my email if you need to ask me further details about our methodology. Thank you very much for your attention.